Hi guys! Welcome back. Uh, you probably noticed that there was no video last weekend, and that's because I was at Crisis in uh, Antwerp, Belgium, which is a big wargaming show that I go to every year. Uh, it was a ton of fun, and it was really nice getting to talk to people who see the channel. That's always cool. Uh, I actually did a vlog about the show last year where I kind of showed some games and gave you a, a sense of the ambiance. So if you're interested in that, I will leave a link to it in the description box down below. Uh, the other thing I got to do while I was at Crisis was pick up quite a few miniatures for this channel. Uh, kind of a mix of things that I've always wanted to paint but just never had up until now. And then also a lot of things that uh, people watching have requested. So I'm really excited to start doing some of that in the coming weeks. Uh, now today I thought I would go ahead actually and paint the special limited edition uh, show mini that was given away at this year's crisis. Um, the model in question here is uh, Empress Matilda. She was a pretty important uh, sort of I think 12th century uh, medieval queen who yeah had a lot of influence on politics in Europe during that period. It's uh, here this model's been sculpted uh, by the ever talented Paul Hicks, and so everyone who attended the show got this lady in their goodie bag. Uh, and of course the drawback here is because this is sort of a show exclusive, you're not really going to be able to buy this model if you didn't get it already. I mean, it might be on eBay or something, but uh, yeah, you're going to probably have a hard time finding it. But I am sure there are other things like this model out there. So. Uh, if you happen to know like a source for another similar type of medieval woman figure, please leave uh, suggestions or links in the comments down below because I'm sure that would really uh, help out people who are watching. Now this is, I think, a very sort of simple, uh, delicate little figure. So I thought it would be a really good opportunity to try painting some more um, complicated patterns because and trying that whole thing out with designs because it's just the kind of perfect uh, model for that kind of work. Uh, of course that's no uh, guarantee that it'll be successful because painting delicate patterns at 28 millimeter is challenging, but hopefully uh, I'll be able to get some nice results that will be helpful to everybody who's watching. So as always, I'm starting out here with all the paints you're going to need for this model. It's a pretty limited palette this time around, and obviously this doesn't include what you'll want for painting her skin and hands. And I realize that painting uh, women in terms of their sort of skin and complexion is different from guys, and I actually have uh, talked about that in some earlier videos. I did one, for example, quite a while ago now on uh, Boudica that goes into painting female skin. So if you want to know more about that, I recommend you check out that video. I'm going to start out by doing, I don't know what you want to call this, sort of an overdress because Maud has lots of layers of clothing she's wearing. I'm base coating this with a mixture of Vallejo black red and just plain black because I want to start out with an even sort of deeper base and build up even more contrast than I normally do when I'm painting red clothing. I'm going to keep the highlighting process pretty uh, straightforward here. So after I apply the base, I'm then going to highlight first with uh, pure black red by itself. I'm then going to make a second highlight by mixing uh, some Citadel Mephiston red into my black red and applying that. And then finally, I'm going to add a layer of just pure uh, Mephiston red. And you may be saying, well, why are you making so many sort of grades of red that's, you know, normally you kind of do a lot less when you're highlighting red things. And that's just because I wanted a deeper, sort of richer color. I'm not going to make it as bright as I sometimes make my red shades. So that's why I felt like I needed more color sort of at the darker end of the spectrum. And it doesn't take very long to paint here anyway, just because this is a pretty small limited area with, with really sort of simple shapes that you have to worry about. I made one final high highlight here just by taking Evil Sun Scarlet. I just made the paint nice and thin and I built up a lot of layers of it uh, just to sort of reach maximum saturation. Though, uh, admittedly, I didn't push it quite as far as I might have just because, as I said at the beginning, I wanted this to be a really deep, rich red and not a really sort of in-your-face, really bright color like I'd make sometimes. I said I really wanted the skirt 
sort of the underskirt here to be really nice and neutral. So I'm base coating this right now with a Vallejo Chocolate Brown. The first highlight layer I'm going to apply now is a mixture of the chocolate brown and khaki gray. Uh, it's it's kind of subtle here, but as you noticed, I'm kind of going for a little bit more subtle look on her, so I think it makes sense. So anyway, I'm going to be kind of carefully building that up on the sort of the tops of the folds and creases. The nice thing is you've got such deep relief here in the in the skirt that you can really just leave that chocolate brown sort of down in the folds. I'm going to continue highlighting now with just pure khaki gray. Uh, it's kind of a transparent, not super pigmented color, especially when you apply it over uh, other dark shades. So I'm going to be building up several layers of it here. And you can see really just kind of on the top folds again, we're leaving those deep wrinkles really nice and dark. Uh, once the khaki gray is on, I'm going to be lightening the whole look of this skirt further because I don't want it to be sort of too dull and too drab looking. So I've got some Vallejo beige, which I'm going to be using to lighten my khaki gray. And I'm going to apply a couple layers of that just to add sort of extra brightness to this sort of color that I've got going on here. And you can apply a couple layers of that with a little sort of increasing amounts of beige in there just to get sort of a nice kind of light kind of brown cream looking skirt color. Now for some patterns. I promised them at the start, so here I'm going to get started painting them. Now I decided I did want some designs on sort of her uh, sort of overdress here, and I, I did think that I wanted to keep them a little bit more restrained. Uh, so. You can see she's got a really clearly a sort of a border sculpted in there, which is obviously should have some kind of design in it. What I've got here is some Vallejo Sky Grape, and I've got a very small brush here. This is, I think, a triple zero, but like I think a, a zero or a double zero would work just as fine. It, it, they are pretty similar, actually, when you're doing this kind of work at this size. But I've got my Sky Grape really thinned down, so it really flows really well, and I'm going to apply very carefully here. And you can see what I'm doing is I'm really creating a kind of a crosshatch pattern along the bottom border of her skirt and also around her sleeves. Um, then what I'm doing, I've taken my khaki gray here now, and I'm going to be creating sort of a, a border around sort of, or a line along the top of that border, I guess I should say, sort of to emphasize it further. Uh, the other thing I'm going to be doing is painting some little sort of cross designs onto, uh, uh, sort of onto the sort of the main body of her dress, as you'll see in a minute. Uh, you can use khaki gray as the base there, but actually I find that working from a really really dark base when you're doing patterns tends to work better so actually you probably want to grab some chocolate brown and first freehand or figure out where all your little kind of crosses are going to be with the chocolate brown and then once you've got the, that base on there you can go ahead and highlight them so after you know after I've got those all in uh, in place here I'm then going to sort of move on to sort of highlighting the sort of design that I've kind of worked out here Now, as far as the highlighting goes, it's actually pretty easy here. For the little cross designs, I'm just uh, taking some khaki gray first and going over the crosses because remember I base coated those with chocolate brown, so they need to be a little bit lighter. Now that that border sort of line, which I base coated uh, in khaki gray, obviously I'm going to need a higher color to highlight that. So I took my khaki gray and I went ahead and mixed some of the beige in it to create a much lighter shade, and I'm going to use that to highlight that sort of border line, and also I'm going to use it as a highlight color on the little crosses I just created and just it, it gives it kind of a little dimensionality and stuff especially on the crosses and on the borderline you know you, you basically want to apply these higher highlight colors everywhere except down in deep recesses and folds that's the point of the whole highlighting the pattern thing you know if it's if it's the same color everywhere then it's not going to do you any good um, as far as the white crosshatch patterns, I've got some really thin white paint here I'm going to be using to kind of highlight those further. And I'm, while I'm at it, I'm going to be putting tiny little white dots in the middle of the squares that are created by the crosshatch just to add a little extra decorational element to it. And, and, and it's something that one of the few things actually probably at this scale that you could actually do to kind of refine the pattern that's not going to be too difficult. and. Uh, make too much of a mess, but it is going to kind of add that extra complexity, which you really want to kind of try to indicate a little bit. 
For the lining of her cloak, I decided to again go with a very dark red color, uh, actually even darker than her dress. So I base coated uh, this area first with just pure black, and then I started highlighting with uh, sort of a mixture of black and black red, uh, followed uh, by black red again, and then the mix of Mephiston red and black red sort of to highlight it further, sort of. And then I finished with a final layer of just uh, pure a Mephiston red, but I applied it like very thinly and only to the areas that I wanted to be really, really bright. Uh, I really wanted this whole area to sort of look darker uh, than her dress. And I think that worked out pretty well just by leaving out the Evil Sun Scarlet as the sort of that final highlight. I'm going to be doing the outside of her cloak now. I'm base coating it right now with the sky gray. I actually got inspiration for this color palette and to a certain extent the pattern from uh, some photos I found of reenactors online who did uh, sort of royal or noble reenactment from this period and, and were very ornate sort of embroidered clothes. And looking online or looking in pictures is a really good idea when you're going to be working on a figure like this just to get ideas about that kind of stuff. The problem of course you run into when you're doing something really small like this uh, is you may find some really cool patterns but a lot of them are not going to be really reproducible at 28 millimeters so you know you're gonna to have to compromise and sort of you know, make some changes but sort of the overall feel of this you know you can really go really it's a really good idea to sort of look around for ideas before you get started. Once the initial uh, sky gray base coat was on, I then made a 50-50 mix here of Vallejo sky gray again and with some white. And you can see I'm gonna start uh, building up highlights on this uh, cloak. It's, you know, there's a lot of nice sculpted wrinkles and folds and creases in here that are really, really well defined. So it's, it's pretty easy to figure out where you need to apply paint and you don't really have to make anything up. Uh, you are going to probably need to apply a couple layers here in some places just to get sort of more variation of tone and yeah there are some areas where you're going to have to do a little bit of blending as well. I finished highlighting the base of the cloak here using just pure white nice and thin again so as usual, applying it several times, building up different layers. I'm not super concerned that I get like a blisteringly pure white here, just a kind of a nice uh, whitish gray with some different nuances and sort of different kind of things going on with the shade is absolutely fine. And the other thing is because we're gonna actually be applying a lot of patterns on this really soon, you don't necessarily have to get really, really concerned that you have the smoothest blending or that everything is just absolutely perfect as far as the white goes because we're gonna put so much stuff on top of it that that's really gonna show up a whole lot less. Now I'm gonna start free handing the pattern in here. I've got some Vallejo Black Red again. I've got it real, real thin. I'm still using that super tiny brush, the, the double zero or the triple zero that I had from before. Uh, I'm gonna start out by doing a pattern along the borders of the cloak because it's very clear that they're supposed to be sort of a separate border there due to the sculpting. I'm gonna start out here by making a series of kind of half circle uh, patterns. For whatever reason, I find it much easier at this scale to paint half circles uh, than I do uh, full circles just to get them even and stuff. Uh, I am making them kind of larger there along the bottom of the cloak and around sort of that top border there, I'm making much smaller looking half circles. Now for the main body of the cloak, I'm now I'm going to grab some uh, chocolate brown, which I'm going to thin down a whole bunch. And I'm, first I'm going to paint a nice sort of fairly thick border there 
to differentiate the, sort of the bottom edge of the cloak, but also along those side pieces uh, as well. And once I've got that blocked in, I'm going to start uh, creating a crosshatch pattern. Uh, the main thing with that is just really take your time, go really slow. That is one problem with, there's so much sort of relief sculpted into this cloak, it really can get in the way of making a complicated pattern. So that's something you may want to take into consideration before you start, just how much how much sculpting you're going to have to contend with. If, if it's a fairly smooth surface with not much, then you can do probably more advanced things. And when it's like this, you're going to have to be a lot more sort of reserved with your choices. So when I do the crosshatch, I tend to start out making all, making all the lines going the same way, as you can see here, at least on on one, uh, sort of the uh, on a, a connected piece of fabric. See the sort of the top area around draped around her shoulders and stuff because of how that wraps around her body. It's kind of like a separate area, so you can kind of think about it separately. And I'm mostly concerned when I'm pinning those lines that I've got nice even spacing in between them as best as I can manage because it'll just look better when it's done. And once I've got all the lines going in one direction, I'll just go back in now and just go the other direction. Uh, and it's the same thing. You really just want to mostly try to pay attention to making sure you've got even spacing uh, between your lines because it's just going to make the finished product look that much better. Now obviously with this grid pattern, you're gonna to want to put some design in the middle of those squares. Uh, I kind of opted for a fairly straightforward star pattern. It, this scale is going to be really hard to paint it really evenly and neatly. I mean, if you have more patience than me, you can maybe do a bit of a better job, but it's still going to be hard to make it look good, especially, again, as I said, with these really deep wrinkles and folds in the fabric, getting that to look good is going to be extra challenging. But I'm just going to do my best here, uh, try to indicate some kind of shape. Uh, the advantage you have is that at this scale, most people are going to be just impressed if you manage to make it look like anything decent from a distance and you know if it's a little rougher up close it's usually going to be okay. I'm using my uh, really nice thinned down black red for this again and I'm just really going to go in and just paint these little stars everywhere. And I'm also going to be taking the black red and making some dots in the center of all of those half circles that I created just to sort of fill in more space. When you're doing a really complicated pattern like this and it's at a really small scale and if you just feel like you need to add something else to just make the thing look more detailed and dense but you don't want to make everything look bad add dots uh seriously they're really good they're easy even at this scale they're fairly easy to make fairly easy to get well spaced they'll add sort of an extra dimension to your pattern um and you know it, a lot of what you're doing here is actually trying to kind of give the indication of a very complicated pattern but not necessarily completely mimicking every aspect of it. So just sort of any little lines or dashes or dots you add in are just going to help with that illusion that you're kind of working to create. I'm next going to do a bit of highlighting on the pattern. I know that seems a little bit suicidal, but it is going to make everything look a heck of a lot better. Uh, I'm also using this opportunity to do some cleanup work. Almost certainly you're going to get some unevenness and some things that are too thick or too thin. Uh, so I'm going to be using white to kind of go in and even out some lines that I don't like the look of or just smooth out where I put blobs of paint that I don't want and just because sometimes it can be easier really uh, when you're painting these patterns and set to try to sort of remove color sort of subtract color as opposed to adding it really so if you you paint something you could kind of arrive for job and then sort of to refine it by sort of painting around the edges can work really well but anyway I'm highlighting the uh, the uh, brownish uh, yellow lines here now I'm first using a coat of the khaki gray uh, which is going to make for a pretty subtle highlight and it's probably a little bit maddening to do this but if you go right away up to a much lighter highlight on top of your chocolate brown it's going to look too stark and it's not going to be very good so I really recommend that you put in extra time if you're going to be doing a pattern like this to do at least a little bit of intermediate shading. So I'm applying sort of the khaki gray now to areas that are going to be more highlighted the tops of all those creases and wrinkles and folds in the cloak and there are a lot of them as you can see uh, and once that's on I'm just going to kind of reinforce that effect further 
uh, by mixing some beige into the khaki gray to get kind of a creamy uh, yellow highlight. And I'm gonna be applying that again uh, and just focusing it into even smaller areas on the tops of the wrinkles and folds. But if you do this well, you're really gonna start to see some nice looking dimension in your design. In order to highlight the red areas, I just grabbed some Evil Sun Scarlet. So I went right straight for the brightest red that I had because with these small designs I, and with red, I didn't think it really paid to do anything intermediate. You just wouldn't have seen it. So, and especially since the Evil Sun Scarlet tends to go on pretty thin and transparent anyway, and you kind of need to build it up. So I'm just doing the same thing here really with the red and using it to brighten up the areas where the kind of the red design is on the tops of all the wrinkles and folds in the cloak. Once the pattern was done, I went back in again with just some pure, really thin white, and I'm gonna again be cleaning up the edges and just neatening up some designs and bits that I, I didn't really like the look of where there's lines that are too thick or star is it a little too messy and just sort of just tightening up the whole pattern. Uh, this really can make a huge uh, difference in how good the whole thing comes off. So I really recommend that when you're about finished, you sort of take the time to make this these sort of little corrections. Uh, now for her uh, sort of, I don't know, veil, I guess you want to call it. Uh, I'm base coating it here with a mixture of the khaki gray and the beige. I already had some out for highlighting the uh, pattern. And I'm just going to be applying this carefully and it will take a couple layers to get it so it really looks nice over the black. I'm going to be highlighting the veil uh, first by taking a mixture of Vallejo Beige with some white in it and I'm just going to be applying several layers here again building it up on the tops of the creases in the fabric. Uh, and kind of blending out a little bit down into the folds because I don't want quite such dark shadows uh, on this particular piece of fabric. Uh, then I will make one final highlight on the fabric using uh, just pure white, which may seem a little strong, but again, remember how transparently it goes on. So you can really build up uh, several layers on sort of the t tops of the folds and creases to really get sort of a nice kind of creamy looking fabric effect here. You could have got, done this with uh, grayer tones, like with the sky gray and gone for a more cold white, but I really thought given that we'd done that kind of on the cloak already, uh, I wanted something a little different here. And also this sort of warm cream color kind of is very complimentary to her underskirt. Next, I'm gonna get some German camouflage black brown, again, Vallejo, and I'm gonna be using it to uh, base coat all the areas where she's kind of got jewelry or bling, so like her belt, her bridge, and her uh, crown. And I'm also gonna be base coating her hair in this color. Uh, this is a nice step because everything really starts to come together. Here, you start really tidying things up. Uh, as far as Ember's Maud's hair color, uh, kind of hard to know with historical figures from that long ago. I think I saw some manuscript il illustrations of her, uh, which seemed to give the sense that it might have been brown or dirty blonde, but you know, so I'm going for kind of a brownish shade here because I think it's going to contrast really nicely with her dress. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight her hair now, which is actually kind of fun to do because she's got braids and braids are really fun to paint, I think. Uh, I'm gonna do a first highlight here with a chocolate brown. Don't forget the top of her head for, I would kind of logically think actually that there would be, that the veil would kind of continue over the top of her head there but it doesn't, at least not according to the sculpting, it actually is sculpted that she has hair up there, so whatever. So anyway, after I put that first chocolate brown layer on, I'm gonna go in with a mixture of uh, chocolate brown and red leather here, and you can see with those braids, you really just kinda wanna use a small brush and kinda build up light color towards kind of the, the tops, the top edges of each of the sort of braid segments. And if you kind of always keep doing that, you're gonna get a really nice look. Because when you pull hair that tight together, it tends to get really shiny too. So you can add some really high highlights. I made one final t high highlight, in fact, here by mixing my uh, red leather and chocolate brown mix with a little bit of beige to lighten it. And you can see I'm dotting on that really kind of light color on the tops of those braid segments and it really makes the hair stand out and really makes it uh, look nice and shiny and healthy. 
All right, let's do uh, the jewelry and metal bits now. I have taken a mixture of the German camouflage black brown and some army painter greedy gold to get a kind of a dark metallic brown shade. And you can see on our belt, what I'm doing is I'm defining like little metal plates. They're not really sculpted in everywhere on the belt, but I'm just gonna make it like that sort of style of plates. Because this is royal uh, royalty, uh, you really don't have to feel like you need to pull any punches with making her look as fancy and decorated as you possibly feel like. Lots of gold, lots of gems. And actually that, if you felt like going a little further, you could actually sort of freehand some gemstones onto her crown or belt as well. I decided not to do that here, but you know, totally could. So. Uh, so you can see I've kind of defined plates on her belt a little further and I've also used this color to do a first highlight on her crown and also on her uh, brooch. And then going back in here with pure greedy gold and I'm just going to kind of continue uh, picking out those little segments in her belt, really defining them. I'm always focusing the highest color kind of towards the top of each of those belt segments because you know light comes down from the top. Uh, and you'll want to probably do a similar thing on the crown and also uh, on her brooch while you're painting those. And you can build up uh, sort of thicker layers of greedy gold too in places where you want to get more shine and just a richer look and then keep it a little bit more subdued in areas where you want there to be a bit more shadow. And because I said this really just couldn't be too shiny, I've now taken the greedy gold and mixed some Vallejo Air Silver into that to create one final really bright edge highlight. And I'm using that especially here on the belt kind of plates to really define the, the sort of the edges of those segments. And I'm gonna use a little bit dollop on, of it on her brooch and especially sort of um, on her crown. The crown actually has some sort of dividing lines and sort of relief into it uh, and you may find helpful after you apply your uh, bright metallic uh, colors to go back in with the German camouflage black brown and use that to kind of carefully pick out the sort of the separate elements of the crown just so everything is really shows up well and is really clearly defined. All right, so here is the finished uh, uh, Crisis 2016 limited edition figure of Queen Maud, um, painted in a fairly ornate style. Uh, this model for me was fun. I enjoyed some parts of it, and then other parts uh, I disliked, disliked a little bit, um, and that was mostly my own fault. For example, uh, the way her sort of underskirt and overdress turned out in terms of the pattern and that red shade that I was able to achieve there, I'm really, really happy with how that looks. I think that looks really nice. Uh, the pattern there is really delicate. It's really what I want to see uh, at the scale. Uh, I think her uh, cloak was a little bit less successful in terms of the pattern. It's It can be so, so difficult to do uh, a very complex or ornate pattern uh, at the scale and have it look good and I really really tried my hardest but you know it you know sometimes you know it, it just isn't possible or it takes a lot more patience I guess than I normally have so uh, I was not as happy with how that came out I mean from a distance I think the overall color palette and the overall look is really good but I personally would have been happier with myself here if I'd been able to create something just a little bit more delicate, a little bit more um, carefully done, I guess. Just, it, I just feel like, you know, I, I feel like I wanna be, I wish that I could have done better there, I guess, for you. Uh, and I think it could have been, but you know, I guess my painting skills are maybe not still quite really up to creating sort of the look there that I was kind of hoping for in my mind. But, you know, overall, I think this figure, it was, it was certainly a beautiful little figure. It was very easy to paint and very, you know, and very enjoyable. Uh, and I think she would also look equally nice with a much simpler uh, paint job uh, as well. So if you enjoyed this video, uh, please like it, uh, share it, leave me comments with what you thought of my work here. Um, uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel too if you haven't gotten a chance to do so uh, already. Uh, your support is very much appreciated. Uh, and I think that's all for now, so uh, I'll see you next time.